Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Prince Podcast here on Podcast Juice. And my name is Michael Dean, and joining me today is Mr. Ann Poole, sir. How are you? Hey, I'm doing great. I have my first pilgrimage to Minneapolis, and I'm ready to get into it. All right. And also joining us today is becoming quite the internet celebrity. You know what I'm, saying? I'm trying to study the game, uh, but we have Kanisa with us. How are you? I'm doing okay. It's a beautiful day in Atlanta. All right. And man, let me shout out the ATL because I will say uh, a lot of people I met in Minneapolis were from Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Uh, y'all showed up <laughs> for sure. And shout out to Chris at Funkatopia. Uh, got a chance to link up with him. And of course, if you've heard the previous show, where we talked about the Target Center uh, show review. But this is going to be about the celebration. Uh, you know, it was almost basically a whole week or weekend. And if we include the symposium uh, that happened at the University of Minnesota, it was a it was a lot going on there for Prince fans. I like to say it was basically uh, our version of Comic Con, but you know, it was about Prince and community. So we're just going to really talk about all of that and some of the highlights and what it meant to us. Um, so. Let me start here. Um, Kanisa, so you actually uh, had the opportunity to attend the symposium. I don't know if I'm saying that right. You know how I butcher names. Let me, let me tell you, I, I don't have, I think it was, her name was Moni Love. I had somebody actually call me out in Minneapolis and, and was like telling me how to, you know, just like, say this word. <laughs> I was like, huh? Just say Minneapolis. I was like, Minneapolis, you ain't, you're, not, you're not saying it right. I was like, damn. So I'm 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 trying, y'all. But anyway, uh, Kanisa, can you yes. give us a little bit of you know, give us some of your thoughts on the symposium? Yeah. So I went up on Sunday, and I had registered for the symposium previously to get the updates, but I didn't get the ticket in time. So I signed up to be a volunteer. So the first day, I volunteered at the symposium, mostly just greeting people as they came into the opening session which is really good. Um, I believe Jeff Chang and Daphne Brooks were the speakers there. And Jeff Chang actually posted a link to his um, opening speech, which was really good. Uh, Over the whole symposium, they were very specific about talking about Prince's upbringing, um, very much about Prince from Minneapolis, which is what the symposium was about. And um, saying, hey, Prince was black, and here's the reason why he presented himself this way, and here's um, the context around what was going on in Minneapolis. It was very racist. It was very segregated. Um, There was a lot of work at Sam's, now known as First Avenue, as integrating it and bringing more diverse acts in. Um, Other famous people were there that weren't mentioned, because everyone knows First Avenue for Prince, but not for some of the other acts that were there, like Wynton Marcellus and like other famous people like that. Hmm. Um, If if you check the hashtag, I know I live tweeted a bunch of the sessions, but a lot of people were live tweeting as well through the different breakout sessions. Shout out to Zach Hoskins and Arlene Oak for their um, presentations on um, uh, Uptown as a a kind of Prince created utopia and um, also Arlene talking about the symbolism in Purple Rain. Um, but yeah, it was it was really good as far as the different types of topics, um, a lot of queer topics, a lot of um, feminist topics. It was very diverse in what they were talking about around Prince. And um, oh, shout out to D'Angelo Duff, who went into the stems of some of Prince's music to say, hey, here's how Claire Fisher c- contributed to a sound. Here's how Eric Leeds added to the sound by playing um, what the bass of the song was and then playing how it sounded after they made their additions. It was really good. So I don't know if they're going to do it next year because they're kind of like this is a one and done type thing. But I know the symposium over across the pond are thinking of doing it again next year. So look out for information about that. All right. Now, did they, uh, I remember there was talk of them giving Prince like an honorary doctrine or something like that. Did mm-hmm. that, did that take place? I guess it didn't happen. Um, it didn't. Um, they, I guess, paused on it for a little bit and we'll see what happens with that going forward. Hmm. Okay. He can get his papers on. Huh? Yeah. Morning papers. Oh, I also have to shout out all that was free. 
Um, ah. And shout out the PR and alumni panel that was there. Maite, Scotty, Dave Hampton was there. And some videos of that, I think, is on their Facebook page. Or they live streamed some of it. Oh. So interesting that you can see a lot of the people who are at Celebration at the same event um, for free earlier in the week. But just interesting things that happen throughout the week as well. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, yeah, I heard a lot of people that were definitely talking about the symposium. I actually got to hear a bit of one. I'm trying to remember. It was a young lady. And, man, they was really breaking some stuff down. It was a lot of big words. and <laughs> They was really going in. But I love the uh, – one, I love the enthusiasm, but I love the details of people, like, you know, looking at it from a different perspective uh, at Prince. So that was very cool. Um, I would love to check out one of those at some point. Uh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and the symposium started, was that started on Monday or? Yes. Um, the opening sessions were on Monday and they had all the people presenting their papers Tuesday and Wednesday. Okay. Okay. And then of course, um, the celebration itself kicked off Thursday, but you know, this whole week there was a lot of events outside of the official, you know, Paisley Park. Uh, stuff. I mean, there was a ton of parties, different types of events. Now, for myself, I got into town on Wednesday. And I just wanted to touch on this a little bit because I think this is, one for me, one of the highlights of what celebration meant to me. Um, you know, getting to the airport and going, going by myself, whatever. But right when I get to the gate, I see these three ladies uh sitting at the gate and they had purple stuff. So I already know. I was, oh, okay. Shit. There's people, people's going to celebration. Like this is serious. And, you know, I was kind of like, okay. And I just kind of sat behind them facing the other way. Right. And I kind of hear them talking and I'm just like telling myself, I'm like, you know what, man, you, this, you, you're coming to do this, to enjoy this and, you know, to, to see everything. So I said, let me introduce myself uh, to these, these people. You know what I'm saying? So, Tap the lady on the shoulder and say, hey, how did you guys go into celebration? And say, yeah, yeah. And then, you know, we all get to meet or whatever. And uh, that's when it just really hit me. I was like, you know what, man, this is this is going to be cool. These are people that probably if, you know, if I saw them any other way, we probably would not have spoken. Not mm -hmm. that, you know, there was anything wrong with them or me. It's just, you know, you're in different lanes and different you're moving and going. But it was a shared thing, and I was like, and everybody, you know, it was just real cool, and everybody was real loving, and then uh, I was like, yo, we all sat together and just talked about different stuff we liked about Prince and our experiences or whatever, taking pictures, and of course, we all had the same flight, and, uh, you know, I, I was just going out there dolo, like I wasn't going to written on car or nothing, I was just going to Uber it, but, you know, it was like, yo, where, where are you going once you touch down, it's like, oh, we're going to uh, the Bloomington Hotel. What was that? The Hilton? Or yeah, I think so. The Hilton where you pick up all your badges. And they was like, you can roll with us. And I was like, tight. <laughs> I was like, of course, that'd be, you know. And I was like, and I just felt comfortable. Cause I was like, okay, I, I, I'm with somebody. You know what I'm saying? I'm not out here solo. So we rolled out there and just had a great time. And then, you know, once you got to that Hilton in Bloomington, you know, that was sort of like, uh, you know, the convergence point rendezvous for everybody to get their celebration stuff. And that was when, you know, when I got in there and you start seeing people that you kind of maybe seen their picture on Facebook or something. And you start, you know, putting it two and two together and everybody started meeting. That's when I was like, you know what, this is going to be an awesome weekend because it was just so much love and people coming up and you know, hugs and uh, and everybody was just mad cool. I mean, it's I always remember when I used to go to Prince concerts as opposed to other concerts I used to go to. There was so much uh, camaraderie and community at a Prince show. You know what I'm saying? Everybody would be just mad cool uh, and get along. And it was there at even, like I said, even at that hotel, I, I saw it right there. I was like, this is what the celebration really is like about, man. Like, uh, it was just, it, it kind of blew me away. And then, of course, I saw Kanisa. You, you were there uh, with your friends. And I was like, okay, now I, I, now I, I know her. 
I know her for real. <laughs> you know, in a sense, I can say I know. But again, we have only seen. I hadn't seen you since last year. Mm-hmm. But obviously, you know, being a part of the show, and you know, it's just like okay, I'm comfortable out here. You know, what I'm saying I, I feel you know, and for me, I'm a big thing where I don't like to do a lot of things where I'm outside of my like comfort zone for better or for worse. But I was like, oh, I'm, I'll be good out here. You know, I'm not gonna be, I'm not gonna be a, uh, I'm not gonna be in a get out situation <laughs> where, <laughs> where I'm gonna be just dropped off out in the woods or something. And see, people were saying I was overreacting when I put that video up. Yeah. Man. <laughs> so, so I suffice to say, uh, that, that that was like the beginning of. I was like, okay, this is gonna be a special time, and um. Yeah, just the, and, and I'm so, and I also want to shout out somebody. Well, uh, Kenisa, do you remember the lady's name? Uh, I want to say her name was Lisa. We were walking outside, and she had called your name. Oh yeah, Lisa Weckenizer. I think I think oh, her name. Yeah, and she I'm was, probably bitching her last name. I don't I, I don't know if the right term is a psychic or whatever, but it was the lady. And a lot of y'all have heard that show where she was on there, and she said she could speak to friends and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. But meeting her in, in person was was really cool. You know, yeah. and uh, she was very nice and uh, she had a lot of great things to say. And, you know, it was just one of those things, again, where it sort of jumped out of the comfort zone and was like, you know what? I'm glad we I'm glad you did come on the show. I'm glad we did have that conversation. Uh, if nothing else, it was uh, I met a cool person and it was something different. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And and then she, like I said, shout her out because it was a lot of love. She came to the meet and greet, which we'll talk about that. But. Yeah, so I, uh, go ahead. I just wanted to add in, um, like, the first part of the week, again, totally out of my comfort zone when it comes to Prince. Um, the first year I went was people I'd never met before <laughs> on in person, but because of Prince, we had that connection. We had the Airbnb. This year, same thing. Um, it was worldwide, and even I had a friend from Canada and another one from Europe or England, and we shared an Airbnb house. Talked to them almost every day for the past year. Um, never met them before. Uh, sometimes we argue online, but it was fine. <laughs> but um, we shared a house. We just gave each other money. It was not a big deal. And um, same thing, because I had my Tumblr folks come in later in the week. Hadn't met most of them. It was their first time to Paisley Park, So uh, some of them. So it was cool to share that experience with them. And then, of course, carry on my co- uh, relationship with Stephanie from last year. And she's been on the podcast as well. But um it, it's just amazing how much I've socially grown because of how he lost Prince and everybody just coming together to help each other through this. Yeah. And speaking of meeting for the first time, so Aunt Pooh, like, of course, Aunt Pooh, I've been on podcast juice. I don't know. It's been five years or more. Uh, yeah. Four. Four. Four years. Uh, and this was our first meeting <laughs> uh, ever. And, uh, you know, it was awesome. You know, that's not like white. It was awesome, man. No, but <laughs> <laughs> but no, it was just hella cool. It's like it's so weird because uh, you know, Aunt, you came in town that night. I don't know, twelve or one a.m. or something, and I was out at an event. So coming back to the hotel, and Aunt Pooh was in there sleeping. I'm like, hey. <laughs> Get up! <laughs> I know you was probably irritated, <laughs> but it was like, damn, man. I was like, I, this is just a trip to me. I'm like, I'll come in here and, and Pooh's in here. Like, <laughs> I was bugging out, man. But I was excited. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that wasn't one of my finer moments. I was just, he's like, I heard something and I was like, okay, this nigga's here. <laughs> <laughs> and then he was like, Aunt, Aunt Pooh, what's up? I'm looking like, I just like, <laughs> Yo, what's up? Just, like, really? <laughs> it was, he came in about five in the morning. And wow. mind you, my plane landed at 12.50. I didn't get to the hotel till about 1.30. I probably didn't knock out till about 2.30. So I'm I'm like heavy deep rim sleep right now. So <laughs> I'm just like, I'm like, I don't mean to be rude, but God damn it, I'm tired. Right. Man, I was, and I was, so I was still on that Seattle time. So I'm like. You know, and that podcast you know, juice hilarious but uh yeah man but um yeah so that was of course uh, you know meeting and pool was is cr- incredible and um also that day um went to the uh 
party at Gluck's uh, for the Paisley Five and Dime. And I got to shout those guys out because that was an awesome event. Um, it was a lot of peop- cool people there. You know, they had a lot of um, some of the alumni came through as well. Um, actually, at this one, I met um, the first time actually like speaking in person to uh, Maite um, was, was there. And that was really cool. Um, Dave, I mean, there was a lot of people there, but it was a, it was a definitely a great party. They had like a live band up there playing at one point, playing Prince songs. And then they had the DJ, uh, I'm my man, uh, from the Bay area. Is it Alfonso star? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He, he was doing his thing and wow. Willie Adams shout that brother out he was up there djing as well but that was a great party i know they had worked hard to really pull that off and i thought they did an exceptional job like it was fun um and again it was just it was packed but it wasn't like you know get up get your head out of my pocketbook you know it was, <laughs> you know st- people stepping on that it was just so like everyone was just mad respectful and it was about prince you know what i'm saying so the music was, was on point and but yeah, good time. Um, so I want to kind of lead us up to some of the events, but of course we got to talk about uh, you know the meet and greet uh, in, in, in that because you know that whole thing was really uh, a thank you to the listeners. It was a thank you to all the guests that we've had on the show that were able to attend and to just you know really let them know how much we appreciate them sharing their stories and stuff. And, you know, I would say, man, I, I didn't know how that was going to go down. I never really did anything like that before, but I was blown away, man. I was like very humbled uh, by that whole experience because, uh, you know, a good number of people came out and everybody was just had all good things to say, you know. And I really wanted to make sure that, you know, Kanisa and Ampu got to like experience that and you know, see that, man, you know, a lot of people, you know, listening to what you guys are saying or, or, or the things that you guys do out there and they really appreciate it. So I don't know what you guys felt about it, but I thought it was awesome. Yeah, definitely. It's interesting because you see the people online all the time and then to meet them in person, like you said earlier, and I'm always shocked when people are like, yeah, you're darling Nisi. I'm like, how do you know me? Really? <laughs> <laughs> and then also finally getting to meet Scotty, which I was very excited about right. from, so I'm a huge One Night Alone era fan, and um, Michael got him to say my name for me in Prince's voice, and I was very excited about that. <laughs> no, we got to back that. At least tell me this so video now, of that. If, you, if you're going to tell that, you got to tell that story. I, I thought it was hilarious. So, oh, my God. <laughs> so we had went out to eat, right? It was um, Kanisa, Stephanie. What was the other young lady that was there? Crystal. Crystal. Shout out to Crystal. So we all went to this uh, it was like a Thai food restaurant. Mm-hmm. It, it, and bomb place. I mean, I don't know. I guess you had been there before. Uh, I've been next door. It's in Edina. Okay. In the 50th in France area. So it was a nice place. And I don't know, for whatever reason, I was trying to hook up with uh, Scotty and Dave to see what they were doing. And so I'm talking to Scotty on the phone. And I remember Kanisa was always you know, like, yo, the way he says Prince's, he does Prince's voice. <laughs> and so I was like, yo, Scotty, man, see if you could do something for me. And as I hand the phone over to Kanisa, and man, you would have thought she was talking to Prince herself, like her reaction. To- <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, he goes, he goes, is is this Kanisa? But he said it in the Prince voice, and I was just like, yes, thank you so much for this. It was very embarrassing and awesome. <laughs> that was, it was it was funny, man. But And shout out to Scotty for doing that. He was hella cool. Mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so at the meet and greet, of course, you know, uh, Scotty Baldwin was there, Dave Hampton, uh, Kim Berry, uh, Donna Gregory. And shout out to Donna, man. Donna always, like, reaches out to me and just always, you know, cares and, like, want to make sure, is there anything she can do? And, you know, I'm going to bring this person, introduce. So really shout out to Donna, man. She definitely uh, is, is dope. Um Sasha was there. Stacia. Uh, Stacia. I know I said Stacia. Stacia was there. Um, Jackie Thompson came through. Uh, and a surprise to me who came and I saw her I saw her pull up and I kind of double take looking out the window. I was like, 
on my Scooby Doo. I was, like, <laughs> but it was a uh, uh, Ingrid uh, Chavez, mm-hmm. and shout out to her, man. She came through and took pictures with everybody. Was real personable. That was really dope. I I, I was like, thank you, you know, for coming through for that. Uh, I know I'm forgetting somebody, um, but uh, uh, and Dwayne, I think Dwayne came through. Too dog. I can't remember. But uh, anyway, it was a amazing an experience. And again, uh, as a thank you to the listeners to be able to like kind of meet some of these people. And again, this was a free event, uh, so you could meet and we you know get something to eat and and have some longer discussions and ask people questions that you may have heard on the podcast and things. So hopefully people enjoyed that. Um, but it, it was a lot of fun. Um, and shout out to, I don't remember her name, but it was a lady. I was going to say young lady, but she wasn't necessarily a young lady, but she was at heart. But there was a lady that came. She was 78 years old. Wow. Um, uh, older lady. She had the purple hair, the, the uh, French T-shirt on. And she just came up to me and she introduced herself. And she's like, yeah, you know, I'm 78 years old. I just got into Prince like two years ago. You know, I, wow. listened, I listened to the podcast. Uh, she was like, my doctor told me not to come out because she had like a bad leg or something. And she was limping, but she's like, I had to come. Like I'm coming out mm-hmm. here, and I was just like blown away. I was like, man, like I want your energy <laughs> at 78. I want your energy at 48, but let alone 70. And I was like, man, that is so dope. Like she was the trooper, man. Like I was like. Phew. But it just goes to show you, Prince music, man, it, it can hit anybody. Like, mm-hmm. it, it don't matter. Well, uh, unfortunately for me, I disappointed a number of people because they were they came looking for Big Sexy. And they're like, oh, that's him. I'm like, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm in pool. Like, I'm in <laughs> yes, there was a lot of people asking about Big Sexy. I was at something a few days later, and a lady had a T-shirt. For Big Sexy. She was like, what's what? his size? And she pulled the shirt out. I was like, I said, nah, that ain't it. <laughs> it might be a little bit. <laughs> but I mean, she was dead. I mean, she's like, where's Big Sexy at? I was like, yeah. My, my man got to come next year. As I told Mar, I said, yo, you got to come next year, man. Like, yeah. no excuses, man. Mm-hmm. But, it, but it was kind of dope. The ones that, that didn't know me were like, oh, wow. It's a pleasure to meet you. I was like, oh, okay. This is kind of fly. <laughs> yeah man it was uh it, it was it was amazing man and then somebody and, and we we've talked about this off air but there was a, a lady i can't remember your name i'm sorry but she was like uh why you guys go so hard on q storm <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah I, oh, man. I, I was worried i was wondering if she was carrying like shh, the lord <laughs> Just, it's all jokes, all jokes. But no, nah, that, that was funny as hell. She was like, I think I just go too rough on him. I need to lay off. I'm like, wow, all right. So uh, Q got uh, fans. Q, Q, Q got his people out there. They rolled, they pulled up on us. She pulled up on us. <laughs> What's up with that? Say something now. <laughs> yeah, I got G checked. <laughs> oh, man. But, um, yeah, just just good times. All right, so uh, and I well, see one of the, pop on the screen here. Go ahead, go ahead. I'm sorry. One of the things that I wanted to note um, is that the the you, you see the followers that they were multicultural, like you know, because yeah. for the most part we're predominantly black. Uh, I'm not that that are doing the show, and to see so many non-black listeners. To that not only you know find out these are the people that are listening to the show and these are the people that as uh, Mike jokingly said pulled up on us it, it just kind of blew my mind because you know you kind of have this tunnel vision of you know well, I'm black and of course um, we're talking about yeah we're talking about Prince but you know you only think that certain people are listening so to see these, these multi these diverse listeners it was you know really humbling. Yeah, man. I mean, that that's the Prince audience. It's, it's everybody, man. All ages, all races. And, uh, you know, yeah, it was, it, you, you said it right. It was humbling. <laughs> um, but it just made me, for, for me, it made me just really want to work even harder and, mm-hmm. and understand, like, what we do. People take it serious. So, you know, we'll make sure we take it serious and give, give the listeners the best 
that we can, you know. Um, and 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 again, a shout out to us. A lot of Patreon people there, and I, I was bowing and hugging with everybody because I was like, man, you don't even know. Like, it means a lot. So yeah, the meet and greet was was uh, amazing. Um, all right, moving forward, let's talk about the celebration and some of our highlights. Um, and let's just jump into day one now. We got to note that uh, Kanisa, you were on the VIP uh, track, or you know, VIP as opposed to general. Mm-hmm. So yeah, slightly different uh, experience than like at least the one that I had. But mm-hmm. I, I think we all had the experience of seeing Sheila E. Uh, mm-hmm. up there, and just wanted to get your uh, thoughts on what did you think of her panel. Yeah, I thought hers was one of my favorites. She did tell some stories that we'd heard before, but it's, of course, different to hear directly from her. And um, knowing that Gilbert, who used to be like in charge of Paisley Park, is now her manager. And then her stories that she told, especially about the white outfit from the Sign of Times <laughs> movie. <laughs> um it basically that she had gotten it made up and Prince hadn't seen it yet until she just uh, they switched positions when she's at the drum and Prince comes up and like has a reaction. And she said she strutted out there and that night she got a thousand dollars and she got some. <laughs> and she just like <laughs> mic drop moment and walked off and everyone's like, yeah. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was probably definitely one of my favorite panels. Yeah, it was, uh, it was, uh, it was definitely really good. I, I love the story too, where she talked about, uh, during the construction of the Paisley Park, you know, building and her and Prince would, you know, periodically come there and visit and different parts would be completed. And, you know, her and him just sort of walking through this field of grass or whatever. And him sounded like, this is where studio is going to be. And this is where that's going to be. I I thought that was really interesting. Um, Uh, One thing I wanted to say is, uh, because this is my first time being near Paisley Park, uh, you really do not, for me, I really did not get the concept of just how large a facility this is. Mm. Uh, I drove around it, I, and then I walked up, up on it, and the thing is huge. And I'm just like, how did he have this concept for this back in, what, 1980, what, six he started building this? And and for the most part, uh, I think, Mike, you were telling me the only thing that had been added to it was the, uh, the, the round, the circular building that was off to the left of it. And he conceptualized and built all of this in 86 and it's so massive and huge yeah man it's it's uh, to me that you know one of the things i was like I, I wish they could break down is just to talk about the magnitude of a young dude making something that putting his money into something like that uh and a young black man doing something like that like you could have easily have spent that money on a multitude of other things, right? <laughs> but he was like, yo, I'm going to build a facility, a studio. not And then again, not some studio in his house type of thing, but an actual, like, professional, huge-ass building with a soundstage and multiple rooms. That's a fascinating and forward-thinking thing to do because you don't, I mean, other people have done that. You know, the only person I can think of in recent times would have been like a Tyler Perry, right? He has that huge studio, but that's mm-hmm. not the norm uh, for an artist to put his money into something like that that can go on forever. You know, that place, you know, as long as it's run right, it's just a creation. I like to this creation station. You can always go in there and create generational wealth out of that place and mm-hmm. and different things. That's a so it's a that's why I was amazed when you know she was talking about it because I'm like man, you don't really hear that kind of story uh, of cats thinking like that, and I think that's an important thing to like highlight about, like I said, what that building signifies even culturally. Like that, that just it's an amazing place, and then of course when you walk in that place, I didn't speak about that. That's the other thing too, and I'm gonna ask Kanisa this. So I hadn't been back in there since. Uh, what 2016 piano and mic and walking in there i was like man it's just emotional and i you know because i hadn't came through that uh atrium part before mm-hmm. you know, i had came on through the side by the soundstage so seeing the you know with the eyes up there 
and everything. And I was like, I had only seen it in pictures. And I was like, man, this is crazy. And uh, you know, some of the guitars and things and stuff. I was just like, ugh. Okay. And then, you know, walk into the sound stage area and everybody was in there. I was like, man, this is the, you always got to remember what this, what went down in this place. You know, what all the songs that were made here, you know, all the videos, just all the work that happened in that building, man. It was such a strong presence uh, in there. I don't know. How, how did you feel when you walked in there? Um, well, this is like my fourth or fifth time in there since he ducked out. And I know, I remember the first time I felt a lot because it was not as busy. There weren't as many people. So this time it was a little different just because I'd just been there maybe four or five months ago. Mm. But, um, I, I always, I guess we'll get into it later as far as how I feel after the four days are over. But this time I'm just like, okay, ready to get in here, ready to learn. This is the University of Prince. <laughs> <laughs> I, I see it more as a um, a place to come and learn and feel and just be comfortable being yourself more than any other place in the world. That mm. Paisley Park is a place to let your hair down and just be you. And it's fine there. I dig that. I dig that. All right. So the yeah the uh, so we do the Sheila E thing. Um, What's, what other sort of standout things you remember from that first day? Um, my first day was kind of light because after Sheila E, we had the tour and then the concert. So I guess for the tour, again, I had just been there a couple of months ago. So a lot of stuff wasn't new. But for VIP, we got to hold his Oscar, which mm. was the nice thing to do, I guess. And then, um, yeah, of course, we had the picture in Studio B. And... Um, we also had like the, the screening room. I think everybody saw this. They showed a video of an old school tour of Paisley Park. So it showed some of the areas that weren't on the tour, or, like right. some of his um, office and things like that. And then they showed um, footage from a concert. I'm trying to remember what exactly it was, but it was an, a Third Eye Girl era concert. Yeah, yeah. And um, that was new instead of the uh, life on the tour for musicology, which is usually what's showed in there. And I did note that in the screensaver, they were showing pyramids of Giza. So it was like his Egyptian stuff was still kind of around hmm. toward the end there, which was nice. Oh, Amsterdam 2014 was a concert. Okay. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Actually, oh, oh, one yeah. other thing I have to point out. In the Galaxy Room that we got to see, they're showing um, the Aladdin show from One Night Alone. So I was very excited about that because uh, I've seen it before. But of course, that's my era. So happy. All right. Um, yeah, I think we saw that video, you, the tour video and the third eye girl. I saw that on my last day, which is kind yeah. of interesting. Um, well, yeah, so the Sheila E, I, I was going to say the Sheila E concert was another standout for me. I had not seen Sheila E live since the Purple Rain tour, so I didn't know what to expect. But man, she knows how to put on a show. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I was blown away. And what really got me was when it starts... I think the first three songs, Sign of Times, playing mm-hmm. the Sunshine Housequake, almost note for note from the Sign of Times movie, you know, the mm-hmm. way that they play it. I I love that because I love that era. And I was like, man, it's okay. She's really going there. And they did a great job. And just the whole performance. Uh, I, 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 I don't know, sometimes when I watch Sheila E on TV, it's, I don't know, it's different when you're there. But I was just like, man, she's really good. Like, uh, just her stage presence and you know mm-hmm. being on stage she knows how to uh, work it and do everything and like I said I was really blown away by her performance uh, I was like and I was like if this is what the rest of the weekend is going to be like it's a wrap because <laughs> she yeah. yeah she was awesome man. and they yeah, th- it, did you kind of get the uh, sense that she would like film some kind of video or something during one of the performances when she got out in the crowd and they had the camera and everything? Oh, they definitely had a camera, yeah. There was one following her because she came right by us in VIP and stood at the back and had a person carrying a mic stand and there was definitely a camera there, yeah. Yeah, I was kind of like, oh, are they filming something here? But um, she was great. And, you know, her attitude, she's kind of sort of adopted like this funky your aunt, you know, it's like your aunt that really had to really get it mm-hmm. popping, but she can kind of snappy a little bit. There was a, it was a part where there was a guy who was a photographer or something up there. Mm-hmm. And she yeah. was like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> it, but it was hilarious. Um, I think, you know, also Maite came out 
Mm-hmm. And the twins. And the twins, yeah, came out during her performance. And she had these uh, two kids that performed. Man, the little boy yeah. on the piano. Jacob and Emma, yeah. He was incredible, man. Woo. Mm-hmm. I did appreciate, like, she did later songs, too. So she did Te Amo Corazon yeah. and had my Te dancing to it. It was really pretty. Yes. It was, she, yeah, she yeah, she did her thing. Shout out to Sheila. It was exceptional. Um, and that pretty much, that ended the first day with her um, doing her thing. Um, and again, there were so many other things going on outside of that. Did you go to anything that night? Uh, I don't think so. Cause it, was that the that was the second night, right? Was, yeah. Mm. So we had the night session on Thursday. Oh, okay. yeah. I probably just went to go sleep. <laughs> I think that night I went and saw the they call the Jelly Bean Johnson Experience. Mm. Uh, that was at the Minneapolis Music Cafe. Uh, I guess I was out in St. Paul's, just kind of a drive away. But what I wanted to say about that, there's something funny happened there. Um, T.C. Ellis uh, hmm. was in the building. And, man, it was straight out of Graffiti Bridge because uh, the musicians were on stage, Jelly Bean. Uh, shout out to, uh, what's his name? Tori Freak Juice. Yeah, Tori Freak Juice, Ruffin which I think he plays with the time sometimes. But uh, it was his show as well. And they had a rapper up there. I don't remember who his name was. But they were just kind of getting started. And then T.C. Ellis comes up on stage, right? And I'm like, oh, okay. And he goes to sort of grab the mic from the rapper. And the rapper dude like kind of pulls the mic back like, eh, nah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, okay. And then uh, TC's like kind of talking into the rapper's ear and you can see him saying stuff. I can't hear what he's saying. And he kind of like tries to grab the mic again and dude's like, nah, bro. And I'm like, I was like, wait a minute. I'm like, are they doing this as a skit? Or is this for real? Because I can see like they ain't letting him touch the mic. (laughs) And I'm like, I could just hear him saying, let me rap, you know. (laughs) And, you know, the music is starting to go and, you know, people are starting to notice now, like, oh, they're not just talking like they kind of fight. You know, I'm not going to say fighting, but you could tell like there's something going on. And then all of a sudden, TC just kind of snatches the mic from old boy and just starts going, you know, spitting bars. And I was like, wow. And you could I could tell the rapper was not feeling it. He was like, "Uh," and he's trying to, like, get the mic and TC's like. Spitting his bars, but kind of moves away from him. <laughs> and I'm like, damn, what? Is this Minneapolis? Is like, they, they be awesome stuff. So he's just rapping nonstop. Like, you could tell, like, he's just starting to kind of freestyle it. Mm-hmm. And then the guitarist dude, he just stopped playing. He's, you know, the drummer kept going, but he was like, nah, I ain't gonna play then. Let's see him play with no music. But Jelly Bean was still kind of playing. And Jelly Bean was just shaking his head, just laughing. <laughs> like, He's just like, ah, right, they go TC. <laughs> and then eventually, you know, he's spitting all his bars. What part? You know, what I'm I'm clowning, but you know, he just said all his raps or whatever. And then he just like, Y'all don't never want to let no real shit rap or real shit on the mic or something. And then just kind of tosses it back to him. I was like, damn, TC Ella still out here uh trying to get on <laughs> He's still in graffiti bridge, huh? <laughs> now, I, I, I have to be careful what I say. TC Ellis will roll up on you and with no problem. <laughs> wow. And pull Next your, meeting greet to be old. Yeah, and pull your G card. So I'm not disrespecting him at all, but it was just funny. Uh, you know, I was just like, man, this is hilarious. But shout out to Jelly B. Johnson, man. He was dope, man. He was on guitar tearing it up. They had... Uh, uh, Jeffrey Mack, brother, if I'm saying your name wrong, I apologize, but Mr. Mack, he actually went and invited me to the show, but he got up on stage, and this dude, man, he was funky as hell. He got on the keyboards and started tearing it up, man. They, they was jamming up there, man. So shout out to Jelly Bean Johnson Experience and uh, Freak Juice. Them boys, man, they they hold it down. I, I can only imagine like if you just lived out there and all these cats just would just be playing on the regular like, mm. Man, it's always they always be having something going on. I was like, and it was just like it was a normal thing to them. I was like, yeah, Jelly Bean here, he be here every Tuesday. I was like, <laughs> like for real. So uh, yeah, shout out to them. Um, day two, 
Yes. Day two was sort of a shorter day because that was the uh, day they did the rescheduled move the prints live on the big screen that day. And if I remember correctly, day two, we watched the uh, piano on the mic show. Mm -hmm. The second show. Second show. Actually, the one that I attended. And that was very interesting to actually watch that show in the same room that it was recorded in. It really just brought back all the memories of being there and stuff. Um, I'm curious, what did you think about it, Kenise? Yeah, because I've heard, a, well, I'm going to admit, of course, I'm a bootleg person. So I'd heard this show before, and I remember liking it for a different reason than the first show. Because the first show, we talked a lot, and it was very personable. The second show, he was much more moody. <laughs> so um, the second, what we saw that morning was the second part of the second show. So by then, he had worked out whatever he was working out, and he was a little more joyful. So, um, there was this one part where he looked directly into the camera while he's saying something. And I was just like, ah. <laughs> so that was really, um, good to see, you know, get the visuals to go along with what I've heard so many times already. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, it was weird. I, I appreciated seeing it. I kind of felt a certain kind of way about it. Uh, on one hand, I, I want them to release that. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I was like, man, this is. Oh no! It was just it's it, probably because it was just an emotional thing to see it, mm -hmm. and he's not here. But it, I'm glad they they showed that though. That was they, yeah, because the year one they showed the first show, but it was only the first 45 minutes or so. We mm -hmm. didn't get to see the second show. So I guess this year, I my my um my group hadn't seen the first part yet, so we started with the part two, and so later we saw the first part. But I'd heard a lot from the people who'd seen that first part that they weren't sure about it because it was so kind of he had a mood and it wasn't very I don't want to say positive it was just like he he was working something out mm. and so I don't feel like that should have been shown a little bit because it didn't give me a good feeling kind of made me feel like ah, I feel weird about this so I'm, I'm glad that we were able to see both sides of it yeah yeah and um I think that was I believe that's all we really did that day we just watched videos um, yeah which was, i had another panel i had the iconography panel with steve park oh, okay. nancy bundit and terry guideson i'm saying her name wrong but th that was interesting um just real quick steve kind of moderated it nancy was the purple rain um kind of photographer and then terry did the sacrifice of victor book so mm, okay. um good interesting stuff there um of course, I'll, I'll post a link to my review, which I'm very detailed about what was spoken about. But interesting to hear his photographers from different eras, from the 80s, 90s, and later, and how their different experiences. Mm -hmm. yeah, and then as VIP, oh. we also got pictures with Wally during that. So Okay, shout out to Wally. <laughs> he was hilarious. <laughs> show up and show out. Uh, that reminds me, actually, we did have a panel that day. I believe it was uh, Brent Fisher and mm. Michael Nelson. Uh, MPG horns, and, and that, that those are good. Um, so, but and then obviously that night was the concert. Now I've already said what I thought about it on another show, but I'm curious. Uh, both of you guys attended. Uh, and Pooh, what did you think of the uh, Prince on the Big Screen? Um, I'm a, I'm a little torn. Uh, on the one hand, it was amazing to see uh, these great musicians perform together uh, in sync with uh, the Prince performance. On the other hand, I saw that whole show back in 2011. So it was kind of like, I was kind of sitting there like, oh man, because when they started off with DMSR, I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of dope. And then they went into, what was it? I think it was 1999, uh, Let's Go Crazy. No, it wasn't Let's Go Crazy. I forget what the second song was, but then when they went to the third song, Music College, I was like, Wait a minute, I kind of remember this set list. I like, I bet you next is extra lovable. And it was extra lovable. I was like, oh my God, I was in attendance for this show. But that aside, um, it was it was really amazing to to watch um this see large crowd just get so excited, get so moved. Uh there was an auntie and uncle in attendance that was damn near ready to go to the room when he was when the door was playing. They were just standing up there, just all up on. I'm like, are you guys serious? 
<laughs> they, like they were hugging and groping each. I was like, I, I tried to video. It. I was I was uh, going back and forth. I should video them because I didn't want to be on creeper status. And by the time I put the phone out, they they stopped because it was just hilarious watching. But overall, they they did a great job. Um, I don't want to be too negative, but they advertise this as an all star band. And other than Shelby and I believe it was Cassie, I didn't recognize anybody else. Oh, Kirk. Uh, I, 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 I'm sorry, who? Adrian Crutchfield. I'm sorry. That name doesn't ring a bell to me. But mm-hmm. when they kept going to the drummer, I kept looking at him like, I know that's not Kirk. Because I just had this feeling like, because, you know, unfortunately, things that were revealed throughout the week and, you know, the the way uh, people have been talking. I was like, I know Kirk ain't. That can't be Kirk. I just kept looking. I'm like, OK, who can that be? I'm going through the list of his drummers. I'm like, that can't be Kirk. And I just tapped someone. I was like, who's the drummer? They were like, that's Kirk Johnson. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. What? <laughs> <laughs> No, he was on the panel too, actually, at yeah. Paisley Park during celebration. Yeah. Yeah. No, but it's just shocked because I, because, I mean, you, we all know the, how his name has been attached with the thing. I've, I've learned since then that he's still been working with Paisley Park, but it was just kind of shocking, you know, that he was playing the drums. Um, but, you know, as far as that all star band, I was like, you know, we could have got Renato. Uh, I understand we could have got the Revolution. We could have got Morris Hayes, you know, some. Uh. some I mean, I'm kind of glad they did that because it was about Prince and um, it would kind of take, would have taken away from that if you're excited to see the musicians. Like, I love Kat Dyson. I love, like, the people who are in the band because I'm, like, the 90s person, right? Or in later. So, like, to me, I wouldn't have wanted, like, the super famous Prince people to be there because I came for Prince and it was easy to focus on him rather than everyone else for me. I, I could I could see that, but it, it, I think the, the way they, they, they market it that way, though, I think all star band, you're thinking yeah. like, okay, who we all going to get, but they did, they did the damn thing. Um, I was hyped for it. I was singing along. I was dancing along. I was watching the, the audience just most of them getting moved on purple rain, which I can't believe people are still getting moved by purple rain after all these years. And I guess um, after his passing, it, it really takes on a life of his own. So I enjoy myself. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah. Same, same. Like, cause um, I always say that I don't prefer the hits tours, like the welcome to, but of course, once you, you start watching it, you're like, Oh yeah, he's real good. And I appreciated how I, I said it on my blog. I'm like, this is the professor here. He's working. He's like, this is what you come to see. And he was very sexy. He was very professional. Um, I, I felt like I had to sit up in my chair a little bit. So I'm like, okay, I got to make sure that I respond when he says to do this. And everybody has to do it <laughs> with enthusiasm. And um, I like the set list, especially um, he pulled out Extraordinary. That's one of my favorites from the older or the 90s song. That's a song, Extraordinary, not extra Yeah. And then um, I, of course, had seen a lot of this show because, again, bootleg person. And they have that one section where he's dancing and he has a purple top that was shown on the Africa channel back in the day. And it's on YouTube now. So it's from that same show. And then, um, yeah, just in general, I thought it was really cool. I'm glad that they said they're going to tour it in 2019. I would definitely go again. And it to me, especially at the beginning where they're like real music by mu- real musicians and they had him saying the day that he would celebrate being April 21st. They, they seem to want to cover all their bases about all the things people said about this show to have him saying certain things that um, would make it okay to do. But I will say I'm glad that the dates changed um, and that this wasn't on the 21st because for me, the 20th as a whole was more emotional. Um, hearing, of course, the things that came out the previous Thursday, I was I tried to push it away from there. But on that Friday, I did get more emotional about it. And especially after seeing him up on the big screen, it's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe he's gone. And so for me, it was the sad day going into the 21st, which we'll get to in a second, which it was easier to handle. All right. Um, and let me correct myself. The, the Brent Fisher, Michael panel, Michael Nelson panel was actually on Thursday, uh, the mm-hmm. first day for us. The panel I saw on Friday was actually the, they called it the early years panel. And that was, oh, with, that was uh, so good. <laughs> uh, uh, Gail Chapman, Bobby Z, Dr. Fink. And then probably in the last five minutes, uh, Des Dickerson joined them. 
Mm. But uh, but yeah, that was really good. There was uh, I will say you know um, it was so funny because Gail was telling them stories like unfiltered versions, <laughs> and uh, you know Doctor Fink and uh, Bobby was like really you know you know keep it respectful type of style. And she was I don't know if you remember on she mentioned this on our sh- on the show actually she told the story about when they put their butts on the uh mm-hmm. so she brought that up and asked them like what was y'all doing and they try to act like they didn't know what the hell she was talking about <laughs> <laughs> but it was hilarious oh oh and we also had the dance panel that day with maya oh. nandy and thomasina tate and thomasina and i just want to quickly say quickly pointed out that she was just there for dance and that everybody has an imagination <laughs> and she had a brother and sister relationship with prince and you know, was this was her, was her name Geneva or what? Yes, Geneva. She was around two thousand to two thousand three. Okay. Yes. Yeah, shout out to her. Um, yeah. So that was the that that day there, and then that night uh, was also the, not only the uh, big screen, but we also went and saw uh, Liv Warfield mm-hmm. at the Dakota, and that was an amazing show right there. Yes. Um, that was something else did something else after that oh uh, went to pancakes. The, uh, pancakes yeah uh shout out to rodney fitzgerald and let me say this rodney fitzgerald that's the guy right there <laughs> like uh i always every time i've ever come to minneapolis i've he's been here uh but he definitely was really the connect for a lot of people this weekend or that weekend uh, was really helping out in a lot of different things I want to say it was, I don't know which night it was, but again, remember, I didn't have a car, so I was just kind of kicking it with people. And one night I was with Rodney there, and he was going to, I was going to ride with him. I think it was, I don't know what night it was, but, uh, and Rodney was like t- telling me, yeah, man, I got to go talk to Wally or this and that and the third. And I'm like, okay, whatever. And I figure, I, oh, I, we came near together. That's what it was. So I knew where his car was parked at Paisley Park. So I was like, if nothing else, I'll be by the car when it's time to go. And so it's uh, Paisley Park was over for the night. And there's people standing outside. You know, they have the buses out there and things. And so I'm waiting by the door. I was like, okay, Wally. And I'll go outside. And after a while, it's like, okay, where 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 is uh, Rodney? Is <laughs> it starting to, you know, people are starting to really leave. And another thing is my battery is about to go dead. So I was like, okay. And I think I had talked to Ant earlier. Possibly I might need a ride for him. So I just, I call Ant because I'm like, I can't find Wally. I mean, I keep on Wally. I can't find <laughs> Rodney, right? And so I call Ant and say, man, you think you'd be able to come out and pick me up? And he said, yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking, I'm like, where is this nigga? No, he did not forget me. And his car was still there. So I'm like, he must still be inside. So I go back up to Paisley Park. And a lady opens the door. And I was like, hey, do you guys have like a walkie talkie or something? I think my ride is inside. He may be in the back or something. And she's like, who are you talking about? I was, uh, it's Rodney. And they, he might be with Wally. And she's like, well, hold on. So they bring this other gentleman. I can't remember his name. He, had, he was up on the stage at one point. And I told him, I said, I'm, I think my man is back there. And he's like, oh, okay. He said, you know what? Just come on. So he takes me and walks me all the way backstage, right? And there's like a lot of people back there. And I'm looking. And I'm like, fuck, where is this dude at? And I don't see him back there. And I saw some other people I knew, but I was like, they hadn't seen him. I was like, okay. And I was like, well, fuck it. And my and old boy was waiting for me. Like, he wasn't just going to let me just nilly nally walked through Paisley Park so, he, so I said oh, he's not back here man I said I appreciate you taking me back here he said man no problem so I go back outside and I'm like damn and they're kind of like telling people okay get off the grounds <laughs> go go across the street and I'm like and it's cold out there and I'm like wow they got me out here looking crazy but then all of a sudden Rodney come walking out the door Dean I was like see I see, see how you do but but shout out to Wally, man. He was so cool. Um, he made some other things happen for me uh, as well. There was another day um, that I had already left. 
And then he called me up. I was like across the street. And he's like, yo, man, Brent, Brent Fisher looking for you in here. And I was like, what? He's like, where is it? Yeah, man, come on back in. We'll get you back in. So came back over there, got in, got the link up with him. Um, but I say all this to say, Rodney, shout out to you, brother. You definitely uh, had a great event at the pancake thing. Shout out to Audrey as well. Um, went to the pancake thing. And that's where I met uh, Geneva. She was in there. Cool sister. Mm -hmm. um, and again, it was just a cool, cool thing. Um, but yeah, the pancake thing, that was dope. Um, Wait, you, you, you forgot who else you met out there at the Target Center. Oh, my man. <laughs> What's his name? Fancy, Fancy Ray. Ray. Fancy, listen, I want all the listeners. Go look up, go on YouTube and look up Fancy Ray. That's all I got to say. This, <laughs> you, you remember him, Kenisa? Yep. <laughs> have you seen his video? Did you, have you, did you ever look that guy up? I didn't, but I am uh, reminded he, now to go do that. If he don't go viral, if he ain't already been viral, I don't know what is, but Fancy <laughs> Ray, man. I, and listen, shout out to Fancy Ray because he listened to the show. Apparently, I didn't know who he was. I just saw this brother... He had the clean suit, you know, he had the finger waves. I mean, he, he was the go to. Yeah, he was on. He was on his, you know, he was an old school player from the Himalayas. I was like, who is this cat? And then he just started. Talking. But when he said Michael Dean, I'm like, oh, shit. Who, <laughs> who is this? <laughs> but he was hysterical. But shout out to Fancy Ray. He's, oh. he's a Minneapolis legend. <laughs> He, and he ran for governor at one point. <laughs> I, oh, man. All right. Anyway. But, yeah, Target Center was, was phenomenal. Uh, you know, and that's, again, I, I gotta keep saying this. Community, community, community. When I went to Target Center, you know, sitting in different places. But where I was sitting, um, there was just a young lady that was sitting there. I didn't know her from anything. You know, we just struck up a conversation. You're sitting right next to the person. But it was a, it was a trip because... Uh, the next day at First Avenue, you know, I was like at the front of the dance stage, whatever, just having a good time. And that young lady that I was sitting next to was there, too. We were just like, oh, that's so funny. Like, here you are again. Mm -hmm. And then even at Paisley Park, I think the last day, somehow we bumped into each other again. Like we were just in line for food or something. And then we end up uh, randomly sitting next to each other at, at in the sound stage, and it was just, and she was there with her. I don't know if it was her mother or somebody, but it was just cool people. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody was just dope, man. It was that I can't stress that enough. Um, day three, uh, all I can say for me was the Funk Soldiers that mm -hmm. they, they shut it down. That 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 band was a Shelby, uh, Cat, uh, Kip, um. Was it with the horn? Julie that, Rayfield, yeah. Xavier Taplin, yeah. um, Adrian there again. Uh, um, they were very good. Yeah, amazing. This was the same band who performed at the Target Center show. And so they had their own panel. At least for me that day, I saw them at, with the panel. Mm -hmm. And they also closed out that day, which I would, in my opinion, was the best of all of the Paisley Park performances, I thought, was them. Yeah, I have to agree, though I have a biased opinion as to why. <laughs> okay. um, but I, I appreciated their set list and how, because they said during their panel, some of them hadn't even heard of some of the songs that were, they would be performing later. But um, for me, highlights were the Lady Crab Driver and Irresistible Bitch mashup. And then they did two songs from the Rainbow Children, which I was very excited about because no one ever does those. And um, while they were doing the work part one, I was like losing my mind and singing and dancing. Security tapped me on the shoulder and they were like, hey, do you want to go dance on stage? Oh, yeah. And it's hilarious because every time... I always say I would never do that because I'm not about that. I don't dance anywhere. Like if Prince would have said that, I would have been like, nope, but I will sit right in front of you and stare at you the whole time. But because I thought they would still have us up for the work part one, because that goes on for a while. I was like, yeah, because I love this song. And so we get backstage and Lenny Beeson from Purple Underground was back there too. Yeah. And they're like, okay, so you're going to do a dance battle. I was like, what? <laughs> And I was like, okay, sure, why not? And my heart was beating so fast. And so they get us up there and we're supposed to dance to Black Sweat. 
And so um, they made me go first. And I was like, okay, what are all the dances? I tried to remember the housequake dance, the get off dance. <laughs> so I tried to do those. And I was like, I know Purple Funk San Francisco has their dance, but I can't remember what it is right now. But um, yeah, we had a good time. And they gave us uh, Funk Soldiers t shirts for our trouble. So Listen, that was fun. <laughs> I, I was bugging out because, well, one thing, I, only because you were there, me and Lenny were sitting together and we were in the back. And I remember he was like, he went to the bathroom or something. I was like, okay. But I'm like, looking, I'm like, where did he go? How, why is he in the bathroom so long? And so when you guys came up on stage, I was like, I was rolling. I was like, that's crazy. But listen, Kinesi was up there doing her thing. I, I, <laughs> I was like, what is she doing? And he's doing a little, I, I saw, I, listen, let me, I saw you up there. I was like, oh, I see Kinesi. Okay. I, I, See what she be doing. <laughs> so moving right along, they did Chelsea Rogers, and I've always wanted to hear the extra lovable with the horns because that's one of my favorite versions where he has the sax solo over the bridge, and I was very excited that they did that. But that whole um, set list was great. They only did one slow song, "Welcome to the Dawn," which I appreciate. It kind of reminds me of those church songs when you're walking into the sanctuary and they have the background music going. But overall, it was a really positive and like high energy concert everybody was on their feet like dancing and just a really good job yeah especially yeah. for it being the 21st it was almost like he was like don't cry about me mm. here's all this amazing music i'm going to keep you distracted mm. while you're here that's what it felt like to me yeah it was it was amazing and that i also i did the tour that day um which uh i, I maybe i might save that conversation for another time but but the tour was cool uh, well, I will say this: the tour, it was great. If you didn't know anything about Prince, um, there were a couple of people who were on that tour with me who had been there back in the days and had been through there with Prince and all this kind of stuff. So it was very interesting to sort of get them, uh, you know, talking uh, to me about things. And uh, you know, I, I have to say, I, I keep it positive. So I want to definitely shout out like the tour guide. I don't remember his name. It was white, younger white dude, the long hair. He kept it very professional. And I can only imagine doing that type of job when you know there are people in there in your group that would probably could break all of this down to you. But you have to do your thing. You know, you have to do your job and, and you got to consider everybody that's there. So I thought mm -hmm. that it was done with the utmost respect. But I just feel like the, the tour that is given to the people who come to celebration, the people who are spending 500 to a thousand dollars, those are not the, oh, we're in Minneapolis. Let's stop by the Paisley Park. You know, it'd be cool. This is something, the Prince thing. Let's go, do, let's go do the Prince thing, people, you mm -hmm. know, who are just in town as tourists. The tour needs to be catered with, that in mind because you know you can't give the same sort of basic information and you know for better or worse you have to have receipts <laughs> when you say something with this group because there was a few things said that people was fact checking my man on and mm -hmm. again I don't blame him because he was just doing his job he is not a prince uh you know, musicologist, let's keep it 1000. He's getting paid a check. This is a job to them. He probably appreciates it, but he don't know it like a lot of these people. So I don't blame him, but I just feel like though, if you are, this is a paid thing and you have people who really appreciate Prince, the tour should be different or you should make sure you get people in there that really going to go dive deep because people were asking questions. There was, I would say this was one part we were in the studio and my man said, yeah, you know, a lot of people performed here or, or recorded with Prince here. You know, James Brown and Prince did a session in here or something to that nature. And right off the gate, it was like, whoa, what, you know, when was this? You know, and again, he could have been correct. What, what do we know? But somebody asked, yo, when, when did that happen? We ain't never heard of James set nine foot in <laughs> Paisley Park, mm -hmm. let alone record with Prince. Oh, it happened. And my man pushed back in. Well, when? Oh, we can, I can prove it. And he said, well, prove it. And then dude just ignored him and just, if you're, I'll be over here, ask if you have any. 
<laughs> and I was like, man, okay, you know, you can't really throw out something, something like that. And 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 if you're the tour guy, you have to me, then you should you're here to educate, so you should be able to answer that question and be able to say, well, you know what? Yeah, back in nineteen da 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 da, this is yeah. what happened. It would be no different than if you was at you know uh, some historical museum for America, and you said, well, George Washington and and Martin Luther King had a meeting here. You'd be like, huh? Well, when did that happen? Well, yeah, it was in 1944. You know, da da da. Or Kennedy and King sat down and had dinner. You would, you you know, you would spit that. You know, kick your knowledge. So, yeah, that, that's there my was thing. something they had it set up to be able to do that. Because I know during our tour, people would ask questions, and she'd um ask the person in her ear to give extra details Interesting. so there seems to be some kind of central place for information but it seems like it wasn't very deep or couldn't answer everything but it's at least if you're going to have it as a talking point definitely have the details somewhere for yeah. someone to tell you yeah but you know and it, but it was cool i i appreciated the tour and, and going through there and seeing stuff um and it was again you're with a lot of cool people <laughs> other prince fans so we ended up having other conversations and meeting up people that were really interesting. Um, so anyway, that was the tour. Um, mm -hmm. Saturday night. At First Avenue party. First Avenue. Yes. Oh, wait. Was that a party? Well, yeah. Which one was that? Tell me. About um, that was the Erotic City one. Oh, okay. That was Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, that was, wasn't it? Duh. Oh, that's because Aunt, you left that morning earlier that morning. That's right. No, I went to the. Uh, no, we went, went to, to the that. Rock City. Yeah, yeah, we went. I'm just saying, you left the night. You left after. I mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah that 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 was my first time actually being in uh, First Avenue, so I was really just bugging out, like looking. Same, at, and I was yeah. like, man, this it seems smaller in the movie. I was like, oh, that's where they were dancing. At. So that was a trip, man. But I'm still trying to figure out where Apollonia was running from. <laughs> I, I kept I kept looking like, wait a minute, because because for anyone who hasn't been to First Avenue. When you come in, you actually uh, you go down steps onto the dance floor. So I'm still trying to figure out where was she running from. It looked like she was running from uh, how do you say it? east west in the building as opposed to north south, which would be from the uh, the door to the stage. She was running across the building. So I'm 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 calling shenanigans <laughs> on damn movies lying to me because something ain't adding up. And then I'm trying to figure out, okay, where did she bump into Jill at? I'm looking for that. I'm looking for, okay, well, where was the time standing at when they walked in? Okay, I'm, then I'm like, okay, how the hell did they have tables to be having that whole, that whole Apollonia Morris? Did y'all see how small that is? I'm like, something's not right. Well, they did have tables. There were some tables, I think, to the, I guess it would be the right section there was like a whole little section over there it was a coat, coat check and then there was like a bar back there i don't know if that's where they filmed all that there's some upstairs too yeah upstairs. really okay i must have missed that you know i went upstairs and i i was hoping they was gonna play the bird so i can get my wally and uh brooks on <laughs> like, yeah. but they never did which you know that's an l for those djs oh man i got a I, well, I will say this i that was such a fun experience uh by the time they played Uptown, man, it was like the record had came to life, man. Like literally the words that was being spoken was being acted out. Mm -hmm. uh, it was just a free moment. Everyone was having a ball. You know, you could just be yourself and just let go. I, I thought it was amazing, man. Like, uh, Okay. I, I, to me, I think that um, when they put one plus one plus one, equals three i was kind of like uh what are they doing here <laughs> like we're we gonna get some i guess yeah, okay it is technically sunday i guess they can get their preaching on but this is it was a strange song. Song. let it go it was, let it go it was, nah, it the was bass live, was cool man. just the you know so you was out uh, you was up on the top or whatever standing around if you'd have been down there sweating it out trust me mm -hmm. you'd have been nah, i was sweating i was getting my sweat on oh, uh, no uh, no uh, okay okay <laughs> Yeah, everything was the shit. I mean, I, it was all Prince music. It was, it was beautiful, man. And they had the little dancers up there for a little oh, bit. Oh, yes, yes. Becky. Becky. Hey. <laughs> they were doing their thing. I'll say that. Yeah. yeah. I, okay, I'm, I'm serious. I'm not trying to hate. I'm not trying to hate. <laughs> but they put on Darling Nikki. 
And I'm sorry, you know, old girl was doing her thing, but I was just a little disappointed. She didn't do the full Prince dance at the beginning, but she she brought it on home. I'm oh, sorry. She brought it on home on top of that speaker, though. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, yeah. She pulled out all the stops on that one. Put the leg behind her back. Yeah. Go ahead. All right. All right. All right. All right. Get you some water. <laughs> <laughs> Oh wow! Really? <laughs> um, but yeah, man, that was it. Was it was it was definitely a, a fun again, just amazing, and, and and it was still still meeting people, you know, uh, from the podcast, uh, listeners and stuff, and it was just a fun time. Uh, that takes us to a day four Sunday. Day four, yeah. And uh, I think it starts off with the well, I don't know if it starts for everybody the same thing was it the it F-Deluxe? was the okay. FLX panel yeah <laughs> that was an interesting time <laughs> yes it was my, and shout out to my man Eric Lees man Eric keeps it a buck the whole he don't he really don't he don't give a F man it's like I'm, I'm doing me and it is what it is because he was just like there was a part when him a part when him and Susanna was just kind of going back and forth. I yeah. don't know how much of it was jokey jokes or what little reality was in there. Yeah, because she was like, I used to date him, and it was just like a bunch of sex jokes, and I was like, What is happening right now? What is happening? Now, does she mean she dated Eric? That's what she said. She's like, It's used to, we used to date, so it's okay. And we were like, uh, What? Boy. I don't know if she was joking or like that whole part. I just stopped writing and just stared at them like. <laughs> Yeah, it was very uncomfortable. Out. Or someone said it was definitely a family because this is how families do <laughs> the way they were right. bickering a little bit. Yeah, it was. Uh, it was interesting, and I thought it was also interesting to hear Saint Paul talk about leaving them with them up there, mm-hmm. like and really, like you know, I, you know, it was one thing to, to talk to him and you, you talk about it, but then to put it in context, like man. You, if you leave the group, it's over. You know, how does everybody else eat and different things? So it was interesting right. to, to have to hear him have that conversation with them up there. And apologize for it. Yeah. 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 It was I thought that was really good. That was a it was a good panel. Um yeah. and then uh, what did you end up doing after that? Uh, I had the early years and we had Des for the whole time. So that was fun. And I liked hearing the extra details of that first Capri show. And how Des was like, yeah, I was running up and down the aisles and we could hear the trucker um, interference with their wireless transmitters. It, it was a lot of tin for good buddies, I think somebody said. Oh, and and then had to point out, Gail said something about Prince used to wear lace up underwear <laughs> okay. during those days. And that I was a good reaction. Know that. You, the ladies needed to know <laughs> that. Yeah. All right, all right. And then we had the screening of Montreal 2015. I think everyone was in the room for that. Um, no, no. I think I saw that the day before. But so okay. for for us, we did. Um, we had our iconi, our iconography. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. The motherfuckers <laughs> who take the pictures. But yeah. but it was uh Steve Park and uh, uh, Alan. I don't know how to say his last name. Starts with a B. Mm-hmm. He was the photographer from like the Dirty Mind through 1999 stuff, and he was showing a lot of his pictures and talking about working with Prince back in those days. It was very interesting, and and he's got a he said he's got a book coming out too. I just, Yay! I cannot wait uh, for that, and we got to get him on the show because he, you could tell he had a lot of great stories, and you know just that early Prince and Andre and stuff. Uh, which fascinates me. Uh, so that was really good. Um, I wanted to talk about this. We haven't mentioned this, but the meal breaks, the the food thing. Mm. What are your thoughts on the food? <laughs> um, well, for VIP, they had salads on the table, and then you had to get in line for the food. So the first day was taking too long, so I went to go get merch, which, by the way, were good. They had some vintage Prince T-shirts that they reprinted. But um, it was all, like I guess, vegetarian food. And since it came, like, some days I would skip, some days I would have it. I mean, they were okay. I'm not a vegetarian, but I felt like I was doing good for my body, I guess. <laughs> mm. well, let me say, shout out to Aaron Tripp, uh, one of the ladies that was fixing the food, and she worked with Prince. But I'll say this about the food, man. Just going to have some real food next time. I say that because 
again, for as much as we are paying to go to this, and I understand the experience of serving things that Prince like, but I just think you can have both. Um, mm. be, you know, the, I had the pizza, and is you know, I'm used to like when you order pizza, it coming straight out the oven, and it's you know, sizzling and popping ready. I can understand they couldn't maybe do it like that, but I just felt I've had better food at work functions, you know, when we have like, you know, big meetings or something and they bring in caterers and things like that. Yeah. I just feel like this is Paisley Park. There should be no expenses. Like, yeah, you can have all your salad and stuff, but uh, even if it's just more like, um, I don't know, noodles or different varieties, but it could be more hot food and different things that are offered in my opinion for what they give you that's that's just me that'd be the only negative thing i could say um but you know i wasn't tripping out i, I went and got something to eat afterwards that's what i always i was like let me just get a little snibble let me get a little bite of this or something but you know i didn't come here to eat anyway but mm -hmm. it is what it is um and then on my last day i had the the dance panel but our dance panel was uh, Kirk Johnson, Tony M, and Damon. Wow, they were all different then. Yeah, and it was purely Q and A, and it was funny because at the beginning Wally was like, "Listen, <laughs> this is gonna be a Q and A without the drama. So <laughs> if you think you're gonna ask some questions, <laughs> going after certain people, we ain't having that." And so they laid that down off the off the top. But I will say, I enjoyed that panel immensely uh they talked about a lot of course there was a lot of great questions that came through um, i actually got up there toward the end and went up to ask a question it was kind of funny because when i got up there uh <laughs> tony was like ah michael dean so when, when's that interview coming man I yeah like, i was like okay you gonna put me on the spot like, we, we could do. but um it was a great panel because they all, you know, answered stuff. People were asking great stuff. And it was, you know, I know a lot of people feel a certain type of way, but I thought it was cool to see them all up there. Um, mm -hmm. No matter what you felt, it was interesting. And, you know, maybe the door might be open where we might be able to do something and, you know, have some of these conversations Uh you know, as I did link up with Tony for a second afterwards, but there was, I didn't, I didn't, I did, sure didn't think the Game Boys would be doing a panel and I, <laughs> it was very interesting and I'm glad they did. Tony told one story that I thought was really cool where uh, they were somewhere in some other country or something on tour and Tony wanted to do like skydiving or something like that. Mm -hmm. or jump parasailing. Off, parasailing. And, and he just talked about like, he went ahead, he went ahead and did it anyway when and he didn't tell anybody he did it because he knew that they weren't going to be allowed to do something like that in case they got hurt but what's funny is he talked about when prince called them like the next day or something that and he said did you have fun <laughs> like, what you talking about man did you have fun and you know he just came and admitted well yeah man shit <laughs> you know i ain't gonna you know i'm from north side minneapolis i ain't never got to do no shit like this it probably never will, you know what I'm saying? I'll go ahead and take the L on that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but it was just interesting to hear them talk about, you know, where they came from and then getting this opportunity and to, you know, be a prince. And they talked about that. Somebody asked them about, man, what was up with them dance moves when you had to get and hump up, hump up on Prince? And, all that? <laughs> and they was like, I, hey, it wasn't me, man. I ain't come up with that. And I, I, you know, that's Damon. He had... <laughs> He was like, and, and what it, you know, and they talked about what it was like when they saw him with those pants with the butt out because they had no <laughs> idea either. Um, but uh, I'll, we'll save that when we get him on the show. But yeah, it was really, really good. Yeah, it's interesting how they everybody had different dance ones because I think Maite did one. Yeah. Um, and then I had Thomasina and the twins, and you had the Game Boys essentially. And then another group had Wally in the in Thomasina. Yeah. Get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, what's Wally doing? <laughs> Actually, Wally was in ours essentially uh, in a sense as well because he was uh whole and it was so funny. I was my man Wally was talking and he had the mic down on his thigh <laughs> and it's like nigga we can't hear you. <laughs> oh <laughs> Wally is hilarious. Um and then uh 
F Deluxe, yep, aka Arthur. the family performed. What did you think about that? They were extremely funky. Mm. Um, I have an F Deluxe shirt because I need to have every Prince related thing. I admittedly am not a huge fan of the family. I like Mutiny, but I kind of like it better when Prince does it. And then, um, so I, because I was trying to get the the set list of what they were singing. I knew they did a lot of family songs, but some of them I'm like, I'm not sure what these are. are these new F Deluxe songs. Mm. I know some of them are funk covers, but. I, I kind of felt bad because it seemed like a lot of the audience was sitting during theirs mm-hmm. and it was a strange choice to end celebration with them, but um, they were very funky. I have to say that musically they were amazing. Yeah. I think that they should have probably went on the second day mm. or third day, you know, or maybe the third day, excuse me. Or maybe and, the first day. Cause oh, I know possibly, George yeah. Clinton went first last year and they were the kind of the wild card out of everyone. Yeah. Because Sheila shut and she really set the bar, yeah. you know, and then uh, Funk Soldiers, they just shut it down. And mm-hmm. I think the the fan, I call them family, and that's my guys, you know, I was Eric and, and St. Paul. I just think that their music, one, they're doing some of their original stuff, which I know a lot of people don't know. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of where I think that sitting down kind of came from because they're just not familiar with those songs. But I think every time they did a family song, they got good uh, reception. Oh, yeah. I just think yeah. their bands are just totally different. And, and if, I think you wanted to have something with super high energy to close it all out. Yeah, and their songs, even though the family songs they did, it was it was not exactly how it's played on the record. Because right. I know high fashion, I was listening for that synth. Da, 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 da. And that wasn't really there. I don't know if it, the keyboards weren't up or not, but it was like a kind of remix of those songs, seems like. Yeah, even like River Run Dry, which is one of my favorite songs, period. But the way they did it, they slowed it. To me, I just thought they slowed it down too much. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And then they did Desire, which is another one of my, uh But they took, they again, they, they kind of remixed it. And I just felt mm-hmm. like, uh, I don't go too far away from what it what what Prince did, but uh, yeah. you know it was a good show. You know, again, I really appreciate Susanna, you know, doing her thing. And Eric, I actually was thinking maybe they should have just thrown in some like uh, Madhouse, yeah, couple things so you can let Eric really shine and and do some of those familiar uh, lines and stuff. But but mm-hmm. all in all, I mean, it was it was definitely enjoyable. Um, now, it's so funny. I actually ended up kind of leaving just as they were getting ready to wrap up. So I missed whatever was going on afterward. But yeah. reading your thing, you said uh, they gave us a little shout out on that. They did. They, they, uh, Wally they shouted out Purple Underground, Rodney, and he said, Michael Dean. And it was, it was a little weird because he wasn't like, thanks for coming. It was like last year, there was a, a whole speech at the end. And this year, it's kind of like, okay, bye. So it's kind of like, oh, is it over? Do we leave? But um, yeah, it was cool to get that shout out for you, though. All right, huh? Yeah, we had a uh, seeing Wally all through that week. So it was uh, it was kind of like a little click right there with, you know, Purple Underground, mm-hmm. Rodney, uh, myself. We were all just kind of kicking it. But uh, I would say I had a ball celebration. I thought it was excellent. Um I didn't feel like I missed anything. Um, You know, there are different things I think they can improve on, but I thought that it was done very well. You know, I think it may have exceeded my expectations uh, for a lot because, you know, I didn't know what to expect per se, Mm -hmm. but I thought all the performances were good. I thought the panels were pretty good. You know, well, let me say that. Let me say that. I want to hear what you think, and then we're going to go on to what do we want to see next time? Yeah, I mean... As this is my second celebration, I kind of like the first year more. I, of course, it's going to be more emotional with it being the first anniversary of him being gone. But um, some days I felt like I didn't see enough of him because uh, I know at least the first day, I think we had the a panel and we didn't see any live footage that day. Whereas last year, you started every day with Prince performance. So he kind of opened every day up. Uh, and I kind of prefer that. And then um, it seems a little... All, not all over the place, but there's a lot happening <laughs> this year. As opposed to last year, it's like 
it seemed more structured in a way. And I know um, there are some differences as far as the tour, because tour last year was very quick. This year was longer and there's more time. It, it's just that there's something that comes with sharing those concert experiences with everybody in the room, because I don't know if it weighs to the emotional component or the energy in the room is just higher when we're all seeing him together. And I, I think that they should probably keep those that way just to make sure everyone feels him more because this year I didn't feel him as much as I did the first year. Okay. Okay. Um, some improvements, if I can give some feedback and shout out to Paisley park and Joel and all those people there. Um, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. Oh, I would say, um, last year they did a, a, a deposit. It was just one during the summer and then all of a sudden it was due the balance was due maybe like january or december like right after the holidays and everyone's poor so i was like mm. if you could split those up and say okay the first deposit will be due on this day and no so everybody can know when those fall so they can plan for it that would be good mm -hmm. and again make sure we have a screening every day and um i think those were my main ones and of course the music playing in the sound stage was the same playlist every year so maybe put in some unreleased stuff maybe say oh here's a here's the stems for this one song and have the information up on the screen so people can know and then really just more of him because as time goes on we're going to hear the same panels from the same people and this you know stories right. will be the same so maybe have a panel for showing music videos or some of the movies like the 3121 movie or um the uh oh i can't remember the 80s video where the second uh, coming yes the second coming show that like show those videos mm, and at the end of the day that's what we want to see and we love the stories but we want to see him yeah i would say you know first thing i would say is um really dive into what uh ask the fans what they want to see kind of what you just talked about uh and get, and so the thing is, there's so many talented people that are into Prince uh, and a lot of people that contribute a lot of stuff. I would say start to link up with those people and get a, a sense of, you know, what do the fans want moving forward? <clears throat> uh, and what I mean by that is exactly what you just described and things that you want to see. Um, I think that... Uh, I don't know, this is going to sound how this can sound. Here's the thing. It is ran by Graceland. And I'm not, I'm mad at that. I'm not mad at that. It is business. But it's not, it shouldn't be ran like any other thing. This is Prince. So to me, you have to go deep dive for the celebration. And that mm -hmm. means when you do the tour, like I said earlier, have people that are extensive in what it is that they're talking about so for instance when you go into the studio in my opinion they should have uh go and get either it's a virtual lindrums or get a real two or three lindrums have them set up so that people you have somebody that's a studio person or you know that can really demo yeah. those out and show you and yeah. say here you go ahead and this is how you this is how you program a beat. Now, I want you and you get to try it. Now, of course, your shit ain't gonna sound like sacrifice. You know, it's not gonna sound like Dorothy Parker, <laughs> but <laughs> it will give you context to understand one how difficult it is to do that. How it is a skill, and then you can understand how talented Prince really was, right? Mm -hmm. Because you get to put hands on it. You're not using the one he used, but here, this is what it, and here's how he had his drum set you know you understand oh and it just gives you better understanding of the genius of what he was doing with drum programming for instance mm -hmm. uh things of that nature there should be you know if you're vip maybe the control board and they should have two inch tape loaded up and so you can actually be able here we're gonna play whatever song this is we'll pull out pull down that uh, fader number two well you just pulled the bass out now you can see, and now you get a better understanding of how these things were mixed. Hell, you get Susan Rogers or, or one of the other people who were engineers, right? And you can actually understand what it took for him to create the music or what it took for the engineer, how they were working. So it's not just telling you a story, but you actually get to 
physically get some context to understand, wow, it's one thing you telling me you had to stay up all night and do the mix later that night, but to actually show you, mm -hmm. here's how hard this really was. And so all those songs that you've been listening to, this is what we did. So now you can be like, whoa, you'd be more blown away. Like, okay, wow, I understand. That's the type of stuff that they should be doing. They should have the person, you know, you get somebody as the seamstress or whatever, and you can be able to, you know, here's all the clothes. Here's what we did. You know, we were in this room right here, and this is where it went down, or this is where we did the videos. You know, be able to see that uh, type of stuff. And I say you can dig deeper on this because, again, we're paying a premium price. So you can afford to have these people that's only going to be there three or four days to really go deep. And you don't have that as a regular tour. Mm -hmm. um, and again, same with uh, the people who are moderating these panels. I can understand why they had those radio people from the, the local radio station. But in my opinion, you need to get, you know, uh, the Chris from Funkatopia or even a Funkenberry, or or maybe even myself, or just different people who really know what the fans want to talk about. So when you have those people up there, you can actually ask the questions that the fans really wanted to hear about, and, and people who've been reading up on this stuff and know, oh, well, what happened with this and then and the third? To me, you, you have to, again, you got to dig deep. That's the whole reason of why we come there. Um, and the other thing is, I think, too, uh, you need to dig in them vaults, man. Like, as you said, it needs to just really just be, yeah, let's. It's the only part of, because like I said earlier, we saw pretty much all the people who are at Celebration early in the week at free events. So mm -hmm. the thing that they have that nobody else has is the music. Is the music, the yeah. Yeah, exactly. That footage. Videos, so. And, you know, Love there's that. a lot that even the hardcore haven't seen. You know, I, mm -hmm. I was like, this is a perfect opportunity for them to pull out the Kevin Smith Rainbow Children celebration mm -hmm. footage that we never really seen. Show some of that. Talk about. Was that the first celebration? 2000. Was it was that the first one with the, with the Rainbow Children thing? I believe so. If, I mean, so that would be like. Yeah, that would, I mean, to me, and that's the first, you know, Prince was in some of those panels and questioning mm -hmm. people and that whole thing. I think that would be a fascinating And they process. had clinics back then too, right? Because didn't Sheila or Larry, they, they did clinics with their instruments? One of the celebrations they Maybe did. Maybe they did. I don't remember, but it's quite possible. Certainly quite possible. Yeah. Um, but yeah, p play a lot of those things. There's still a lot of stuff we haven't seen. Um, and like I said, I just, and then to me, you know, I would say, you know, I would throw in a cosplay mm -hmm. uh, thing where you, cause I saw a lot of fans just on their own with some very detailed, uh, heavy costume, not costumes, but you know, they, they wore the outfits and stuff. And that takes a lot of, uh, talent and patience to create all those things on your own. Mm -hmm. I thought that might be a a cool thing again it, it it helps grow the community and makes them more a part of it and hell bring in your outfits from the different eras and, and and show them off and we appreciate what you do yeah um so those yeah. are some of the things that i would i would throw and i would also say you know uh representation is important and i mean by that is it was important to prince <laughs> that he had his people out there and to me uh, you know, there needs to be a diverse presentation on the stage. And I'm not talking about the performers. I'm talking about behind the scenes and when all the people that were the, uh, what do you call those people that stand there and guide you to your chairs and I would do say the, ushers, but <laughs> yeah, but yeah, you know what I mean? But like it was, you know, yeah. I listen, keep it 1000. It was all, I saw, I saw black people doing the security. And then I've seen, you know, other people doing everything else. Not that it's a problem, but this is Prince. And Prince, he was not shying away from what he was about. So I just think that you just got to make sure that that it's a balance there because it, it is important. You know, this is a building that a, a black man built. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, and he was a proud of who he was. So as much as the ownership of that thing may be with Graceland, listen, you have to understand what you are dealing with. And if it was a, if, if, if Graceland was in charge of the Martin Luther King estate, I can guarantee you they would have people of color up there walking you inside. How you doing? You know, it would just be, you know what I mean? It, they would make sure that the, it matters. So to me, it matters this <laughs> here too. Like, I'm not saying it shouldn't be white people think. I'm saying it should be a mixture. And you should kind of go out of your way a little bit to make sure that mixture is there. That's just, some people ain't going to agree with that, but that's how I feel about it. Well, for me, I have a different perspective since I wasn't able to attend, you know, funds. Um, I decided to make my own uh, personal Minneapolis Prince tour. So, I, you know, I went to Paisley Park and I saw the Riley Creek underpass. I mm. uh, went to Lake Minnetonka, which was the wrong one that I was supposed to go to. Ended up going to not Lake Minnetonka, which was the right spot to go to. Ended up going to the Prince House. So it gave me a perspective of Minneapolis and one thing I think they should do, and I understand the money is in Paisley Park, but there might be, you know, because it's a business. We ain't too far gone to understand that. Well, Prince ain't too far gone, I should say. Um, they probably should do those Prince um, landmark tour because there are some dope places within Minneapolis that, you know, people might want to go see, like not Lake Minnetonka, like First Ave, like Calhoun Square, like the Purple Rain House, they could open that up and get, make that a tour. So that, that's one thing I would want to see because there is, for me, just driving around, seeing all the scenery, driving down the path that uh, Prince allegedly drove Apollonia down to get to, uh, I can't think of the name of the lake, but uh, from the movie, that to me was dope as hell. I wish Graffiti Bridge was still uh, erected because I would have loved to have taken a couple of pictures there. So that is something to not only, not just encapsulate it just at Paisley Park, but Prince is Minneapolis. There was a reason why, for better or for worse, Justin Timberlake had to do something to honor Prince when they was in Minneapolis. So go ahead and open that up as well. That might be a whole new rev source of revenue stream for them and an even better experience. All right. I think Chaz was doing some tours. Yeah. And different There's things. There's a couple there. I know that you could pay for. It's not Paisley Punk Park Run, <laughs> but Paisley there Punk. are some... <laughs> There's a... <laughs> Sorry. There new podcast coming. A couple of tours that do do that some are even self-paced i believe i think it's the app too i think oh wow okay yeah and you know i i, I also too i say for the fan community it is uh a part of the experience i think a lot of the other stuff outside of it could almost damn near somewhat overshadow not overshadow but be just as big and just as relevant as the things that happened in paisley park too because i think at the end of the day at least for me the takeaway I came with is, is the community of people, all mm -hmm. the fans was such a strong bond that no matter what goes on in Paisley Park, it it only goes on if we come. And it you yeah. know, so there's always things that we can do. And if you know, shout out to people of, of uh I'm, I'm butchering names, people of Paisley Park. Uh, and they had the skate thing. I didn't get to go, but shout out to them. And there was a whole bunch of stuff. There was a cheesecake thing you mentioned. Yes. Um, there was a lot of different things that were dope that were going on that are just as powerful as well. Like there's a lot of people who come to town that don't even go into the celebration. They just go to the yeah. other stuff and just to be with other people, you know, and have a good time. I want to say um, the thing that I love most about going there on the 21st, because they are like, are we going to do it? during that time next year with Easter, it's such a bubble of safety, like with all the drama going around his estate, the news that came out, it was like we were protected from all that because we weren't on social media because we weren't looking at that as much. Mm -hmm. um, people were just so focused on just being together and helping each other through the experience of <laughs> the anniversary. It was like, we didn't hear anything negative. We didn't hear people talking about each other. We didn't hear any drama or arguments really until we left from the time you get there until the time you leave it's a bubble of purple safety where it's just about prince and prince fams and his music and his legacy so um that's that's what i appreciate the most for me next year it's going to be around easter which is a weird time to have it 
But since I've been up there around the 21st every year now, it's like, I feel really uncomfortable not being up there on the 21st because that's like my, that's where I feel safe around that time, if that makes sense. With that said, we are going to wrap up and get up out of here. But I would love to hear from all the listeners who were able to attend what you thought. So definitely leave us a comment, whether this is on you listen to this on YouTube or you're on iTunes or whatever. Uh, shout out. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, I want to quickly just shout out a lot of the other podcasters and stuff that I had an opportunity to meet out there. Dr. Funkenberry, uh, Funkatopia. Uh, Casey Rain, Prince's friend. Uh, shout out to all those guys who's out there putting their work, man, have contributed so much uh, to all of this. So I appreciate being a part of that group. Um, shout out to Paisley Five and Dime, uh, Purple Underground, uh, all of the Bay Area people who came and showed out the Bay Area, man. They definitely know how to put on a party and have a good time, represent. So shout out to all of those guys. Shout out to all of the people who live in the area minneapolis and the surrounding cities they showed us so much love man like yeah, to have absolutely. all these people come into town and people were just great man shout out to the hotels and all that the uber drivers <laughs> it was just it was incredible man um Kenisa, any last words from you oh yeah same shout out for carmen hoover Susie, suzanne helping me out from the local perspective and the dmsr crew and yeah thank you and poo. Okay, I, I, I'm trying to be positive. I'm, I'm trying to be positive. <laughs> but Minneapolis, because we, because we, we came in there. Me and Mike, we didn't have a car. And then we realized, you know what? It'd probably be smarter if we rented a car as opposed to using Uber, because Uber was breaking our back, our pockets. Twenty dollars to go in there. So I rented a car. Minneapolis, I'm going to need y'all to get together city council and rename all these goddamn like, freeway exits because <laughs> y'all killing me. Y'all be killing me. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm still traumatized from all that driving. I like, look for State Route 35W Exit 7B Road 10. I'm like, what the f- I, I, I just had to say that. But other than that, Minneapolis is a beautiful city. I kid you not. Uh, Saturday morning when I was driving around uh, trying to get to Calhoun Square, which y'all should go. That's a really dope spot. Um, looking at those frozen over lakes. Beautiful. I actually thought about, damn, maybe I could live here. <laughs> Till I stepped out and that 55 degree weather hit me. I was like, oh, no, 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 no. <laughs> See, that was good to me because I. It was. But you from LA, so I know you get a little hotter out there. Hell yeah. All right. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening. We will see you next time. And yo, work it like a job. Peace.